Phone's not on, but that's okay because we're just doing a video test anyways. So might as well turn it on in this point because whatever. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Chris and I'm your dad next door. Today, we happen to have the Marantz Professional Microphone labeled as the MPM 1000 sitting here on the stand. And we're just gonna do a quick couple of tests here today and show you what this thing sounds like overall. All audio in this video will be recorded with this microphone and will be tested. There are no filters, no special equalization or anything applied. This will be purely raw audio from it. I may do a small amount of boost to adjust levels just to make sure that they're normal. But other than that, everything will be straight clean. If I change anything, I'll make indications throughout the video what the differences were. So let's get along and get started and we'll uh, show you what this thing's all about. Let's start off here today by taking a look at our microphone. The MPM 1000 comes in an all metal housing with a metal grill that's pretty firm to the touch, no play in it very much at all. There is a small mesh screen on the inside of the microphone there to help with some plosive rejection. It's really a classic design with no buttons or switches on the outside. XLR port on the bottom, which would be standard. Additional items you would see in the kit will be your shock mount, your windscreen, and your XLR cable. Documentation shows that the microphone comes in just shy of 300 grams. In our test, we saw 308 on the scale. Some additional information about the microphone include the polar pattern is cardioid, the frequency response is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, the sensitivity is minus 38 dB, the output is 200 ohms, the self noise is 17 dBA, the maximum SPL is 136 dB, it does require phantom power, and as we've already seen, it weighs in at 0.66 pounds. Now that you know a little bit about the microphone itself and what you get in the kit, let's do some audio tests here. First of all being the off-axis rejection test. So we're going to take this microphone here. I'm going to pick up the stand and I'm going to try to give you as little cable noise as possible. But I'm just going to rotate this microphone and show you what happens to my voice as I rotate around. Again, as discussed, this is a cardioid polar pattern. So with this, you're going to notice that as I rotate around, you should be hearing a substantial amount of rejection from the microphone as I get off access to the capsule. And we're gonna go all the way 180 behind it now just to show you what this sounds like. And if you notice, I'm not moving my mouth any further away from the capsule itself. I'm trying to keep it at the same distance just to show you that it is all rejection from the microphone and not from me moving it further away or closer or anything like that. Now, if you notice, when I do put the microphone back down, I do kind of set it off axis just slightly, maybe about 45, 40, 30 degrees, something along that line. Um, this strategy is actually to help sort of eliminate plosives a little bit. You don't talk directly at the microphone. You kind of talk just to the side of it here. So that way, whenever you have your heavy P's, B's, D's, and things of that sort, they don't necessarily blow straight into the capsule, but they kind of go past it a little bit. It's not a perfect solution. It takes a lot of practice, but it's something that you guys should consider if you use these microphones in scenarios where you may not be using pop filters in, in order to protect against those heavy, aggressive plosives. And as we're talking about plosives, let's go ahead and do a plosive test. I'm going to do a raw test. I will do a test with the windscreen on, and then I will do a final test with a pop filter in front of the microphone as well. So let's go ahead and start with this. I'll rotate the microphone right in front of me again. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's patch. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's patch. And now the same test with the provided windscreen. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's patch. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's patch. And last test with one of these fly swatter style pop filters. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's patch. Peter picked lots of peppers from Paul's patch. You should see there that with the pop filter in place, you'll notice a great amount of a much greater amount of plosive rejection because of the fact that since you have distance between the casing 
and the microphone itself, the air is caught and it has time to slow down before it reaches the capsule. A windscreen typically will help reduce wind noise that's in the room if you're in a high wind environment, but it doesn't necessarily help with plosives as they come aggressively at something. So that's why having that pop filter, even if you were in a windy environment and you had a lot of aggressive plosives, you could run both. But that's why a pop filter typically does a little bit better at plosive rejection than a windscreen, even though you would think that a windscreen would be thicker or something like that. That's just one of those reasons on the way. The actual separation from the, from the casing and from the capsule provides you with better rejection. And now we're just going to do a distance test here. I'm going to show you the differences between proximity as I get close, and then I will get further away from the microphone here. So this microphone to me, I believe is very susceptible to, um, to the proximity effect. And as you get closer, you're going to notice that my voice is going to get deeper. It's going to get more rumbly and it's just going to kind of get, uh, really muddy. And the intention with that is to say that, you know, the capsule is being vibrated that much more. All of the bass notes from my voice are being brought right into the capsule at one time. So they don't have, and they don't have any disbursement, which gives you that, they call it the proximity effect. Um, and then I will show you what it happens when you step further away from the microphone as well. So I'm going to rotate this just a little bit to me so that way I can back up once I'm done. So here we go with the proximity effect, and I am actually almost at a whisper right now, but we're going to see that it's going to get a little deeper. It's going to get kind of muddy, but that's okay because we can see how that works and how everything goes. And if you can still clearly understand everything that I'm saying, then we're actually not doing too bad. According to the meters, it doesn't look like we're clipping or popping too bad. We're tr I'm trying my best not to blow into the microphone very hard, but... There you go. That that's proximity. Let's uh let's go ahead and take a step back and see what happens now. So now I'm about three feet, two and a half feet away from the microphone here, just showing you what happens as you step further back. We're gonna go about five feet away from the microphone here now. Uh, just clearly, yeah, I should start having lots of reverb from my room, etc. And now we are about. Uh, this might be about six feet or so. I don't know my pacing size, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know how big my steps are. But we're going to show you that as I come closer to this microphone, it's going to get back into better sound. You, it, reverb is the biggest killer. And the fact that you lose the sound going straight towards the capsule, you pick up all these standing waves and bouncing and et cetera going around the room. And that's what causes the microphone to lose its quality. And here we go. We are working on what I call my ambient intrusion test. My phone is sitting down right here on this uh, shore leather pouch there. I'm kind of pointing right at it on that table back there. It's about, it's about three and a half, four feet away from me right now. And the phone is currently playing at 50% volume. Now this track is a little louder than my voice, I would say. So it could be a conversation happening in the room. It could be a dog, could be anything like that. I just want to show you the opportunity of what ambient noise is kind of due to condenser microphones, especially of this type and how the intrusion can impact the audio in a negative way. So you just got to be aware that when you're working with these types of microphones, you need to have your audio space your studio space set up to where it works in a unintrusive way as best as you can as you're trying to record or do anything with these types of microphones Now for this portion of the test, I have brought out my MXL 990 for the purpose of the fact that it is another condenser microphone right in the same price range of the Marantz when I purchased them. So I wanted to have the opportunity to put two microphones that are similarly priced, um, obviously construction style differences and things like that, but we wanted to show you the differences in the quality between the two microphones that you're going to get at different at, at similar price ranges. Um, the, uh, the original price for both of these was right around $70. Um, here in the video, I'll provide the current prices on Amazon's and links in the description of the video will have, um, links to these on the Amazon store. So that way you guys can compare them yourselves to whatever the current price is or updated to. Um, but we just wanted to have a quick opportunity. I'm just doing a quick side by side. You're gonna see the you're gonna see the verbiage going between the two different microphones, just to show you the difference between the sounds of them, 
and just give you a quick audio sample so you can make a determination of which one you think sounds a little more clear, a little better. They are both the same distance. They are both cardioid polar patterns. They're both set to the same levels. Actually, if you look down at this mixer output right now, the left channel is currently running on the Marantz and the right channel is currently running on the MXL. So you can see that they're both pretty right there on the same, on the same levels in terms of volume. So any volume differences you would actually hear could be coming from the capsule themselves or what type of audio Audio they're picking up. So with that, I just wanted to give you this quick sample between these two, and we will move on to the uh, rest of the review on the Marantz itself. Now this final little bit of audio here, I'm actually going to do a little bit of post-processing to it and see if we can clean up, see if we can make any adjustments to kind of make it a little nicer sounding. Again, I have not listened to this yet, so anything you guys are hearing, it, I, I don't know what it sounds like, so when I say I'm gonna be cleaning it up, I don't even know what I'm gonna do yet. I'm just gonna listen to it for a little while, make some adjustments, normalize levels, do some equalization, etc., to whatever I think sounds the best. And I want you guys to provide in the comments of the video to see if you can tell from the beginning section of the video how this sounds and the post-processing. And one, judge my processing and see if it's good. Two, if the microphone sounds amazing after it's done or not. You know, we want to try to see if a little bit of equalization or something like that can actually make a huge difference in a microphone like this. Um, other than that, I I haven't used this microphone much. I think it's super susceptible to plosives so i've kind of avoided it myself i normally use my microphones for live streaming content and i get a little rowdy and i get kind of uh you know just hyper and things like that so it's a little harder for me to manage plosives when i'm doing streaming content versus you know this youtube or you know voiceover work so i don't necessarily like these ones that don't have nice uh, built in pop filters as much, but I do love the quality. I do love the, I, I actually really, really like the build quality on this microphone. Um, I like the, I like the small tube design versus the large of the MXL. It just fits in places easier. It looks a little nicer. And, and honestly, this thing has the weight. It screams a little bit of quality. I think you get a decent, really, really decent microphone for the price point that it sits in. One of these days I might put this up against one of my more more expensive like my Shure PGA 27 or my Perception my AKG Perception 220 but we'll we'll maybe do a versus series on one of those in the future and see how it stands up but with that I mean I don't really have much else to say do I think this microphone deserves an opportunity in your locker I kind of do I mean if you're just getting into recording you're just getting into podcasting I think this microphone could blow a bunch out of the water um, if you're upgrading from something like a snowball or something smaller cheaper a webcam mic for sure um, of course, you do have to have an XLR setup. You do have to have a mixer, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, these, these have opportunities to really grow with you and really be a microphone that you can use for a long time. So other than that, I don't have much else to say. If I forgot to talk about something, please let me know in the comments. If you guys were looking for something that I didn't provide in the video, again, provide them in the comments. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. I would appreciate it so much. Additionally, if you liked it so much that you want to come back and watch some more, hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. And that means I get to provide more videos for you in the future. With that, my name's Chris. I'm your dad next door. We will check you guys next time.